Yeah, firstly to say that awareness and open intelligence is synonymous. Okay? These talks from Candice, they're from 2006-7, and that's how it used to call it the beginning. And as we, as we know, there's so many ideas about awareness, and, and it can be very confusing. So that's why over the years it changed into open intelligence, just to keep it completely open to everyone. And, but it's synonymous, so you can use whatever you like, as you can understand it for yourself. Uh, but basically, um, <coughs> the introduction to open intelligence or to awareness is, uh, is something that we can all do right now. If we stop thinking for a moment, recognize what remains. There is alertness, openness, the power to know, that's open intelligence. That's what's looking through your eyes, what's listening to these words, what's feeling, what's sensing. Okay, and then everything comes up, the thoughts coming up again right now, the sensations, and this is open intelligence too. So again, when we stop thinking and then we start thinking, we see that open intelligence is already present. It's equally present. It doesn't run away when we are thinking. Okay? It's not going away anywhere else. It's naturally present. It's just that we've been focusing all of our life to rearrange all of our thoughts and feelings because we thought that if we will do that, then we can relax. Then we can recognize open intelligence then we can arrive somewhere, right? We, we are thinking about our feelings and emotions and trying to solve them. And many of us, you know, been trying to do so many things. You know, we try to replace our thoughts and emotions to better ones. Tried our best, you know, like waking up with the, the feeling or just during the day having the thought of I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not good enough. Who has that feeling? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'm the only one. <laughs> yeah, but we, we know it's, it's just so natural when we have that, like even if we are good in what we do, we are still facing this emotion of, it's not good enough, I can be better, or what people think about me, or yeah, all the self-criticism, and we have some kind of a dialogue within us trying to soothe ourselves by saying, okay, let's look at, on the positive side. That's what I try to do. Let's look at the positive side inside of me. What do I do good? And we try and kind of to make ourselves feel good in not feeling good enough. But did it ever work? Trying to replace what we feel, did it ever work? You can ask yourself this question. It may work for a little bit, like maybe maximum <laughs> an hour <laughs> or a day or a month. It can be like that. But then something would happen, someone will say something or another thought come up and then we feel it again. It drops. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan that. <laughs> That's so good. It drops. <laughs> <laughs> we never know what will happen. It's amazing, you see? <laughs> ah, it's so good, it's so good. Yeah, so we, we're trying to, to control the flow of our thoughts and emotions where we see that we, can re we can't really. We can't really do that. And this is just one single thought. You can take any, any description of the day, for example, waking up with a, with a bad mood. Uh, or waking up with amazing mood, you know? And then something during the day happen and it drops again. Please drop. <laughs> it doesn't happen. And then, and then we f if again, we feel, we truly believe that something needs to change. Something about us, and we can't really figure it out, needs to change. And that's how we see the world. It's like we have the glasses of seeing that we are not good enough, and that's how we see things. And this justified that. 
and this scope of paper also justify that. And wherever I go, I'm, go I'm not good enough. So everywhere we go, we're kind of taking with us a very heavy bag of what we feel about ourselves and what we think people feel about us. And in addition to it, that we need to fix ourselves. So it's like very heavy, very, very heavy. And we can, we can just be with that for the rest of our life, if we like, because there is an option. But let's stay in, in the heavy bag a bit, okay? <laughs> yeah, so we go with this heavy bag and we really feel that something needs to change. Okay, so we try, maybe some of us try to empty our mind, right? Like not to think at all, like feeling empty. Empty, everything is empty. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking even though I have the, the thought of I'm not thinking. <laughs> I'm not thinking right now. And we try, we sit on the meditation cushion and we try to empty our mind. And we are really trying hard. We are trying to relax. <laughs> there is an effort to relax. We are trying to be quiet, to calm our mind. Shall we do it a moment? Just try to do it, okay? <laughs> Just for the, for the fun. For example, if you meditated for so many years, great, you can take it now as an opportunity to notice whether you are just efforting to relax in order to come to some kind of state that is relaxed. And then, okay, you finish the meditation and you continue on with your day and where is your empty mind? Where is your calmness? Does it, does it come with you everywhere? Sometimes it comes, but then again drops. <laughs> you know, we, it's, it just doesn't, it doesn't stick. But we think that, you know, maybe it's just the way it is. <laughs> we, we meant to be sometimes relaxed, you know, sometimes at ease. <coughs> yeah, we do meditation, that's why we do it. We need to do more, more meditation, like more hours. Maybe that will last longer. So we're trying to relax again and maintain this kind of an empty mind or relaxation. Or we're trying maybe to watch our feelings and emotions and be aware of them. Okay, being aware of our thoughts and emotions, what's the point? What does it give us if we are aware of that? You see? So there is a lack of clarity of what we are truly looking for. What we are looking for when we try to be aware? <laughs> so you can ask yourself this question, what do you wish for your life? We all for sure, we want to enjoy life like we, he like we heard in the talk. We want to be at ease, we want to feel relaxed, we want to be clear, we want to know what to do in every moment. We want to know that also when we fail, we know what to do. <laughs> you know, that kind of stability that if we are failing or we are having a mistake or we are doing a mistake, then we are, we are not dropping. <laughs> we are stable. We are unflinching. We know what to say, how to respond in a natural way. We can apologize if we do something that harm people. We can take responsibility for our actions. So we want to be really clear now. Most of us, we know in a way, in a logical way, you know what is right to do. We know what is beneficial. But there is a, such a gap between the reality of what we are feeling and thinking to what actually what's possible for us. We know what's possible. We don't know how to get there. Do you know what I mean? It's like you know exactly. I know I had it many times. I knew I shouldn't say certain things. Or I knew I should act differently. But at that moment, I was so overwhelmed. I was very annoyed, I was very upset, so I just sent, said something that was uh, harmful, you know, that didn't sound like what I was imagined I would say. <laughs> Do you have that too in your life? Like you know, it's, uh, you're the perfect picture of how to deal with situation, but when it comes to the actual situation, it's completely off, inappropriate. And then all the thought that comes after like another thing that you, we need to deal with. So we are lacking actually the how. How can we, how can we uh, relax and rest in every moment as it is, but enjoying clarity, stability, 
our power to be of benefit, um, how to use our gifts and talents in a way that will truly be beneficial. So we come to know that about ourselves. Once we are not focused with all our energy on intention to try to fix these thoughts and emotions, then we are completely open. How to be completely open? That's what we do here. To be completely open in every moment. So the introduction to open intelligence, we've done that. right? We know that open intelligence is always present. And the practice is short moment of open intelligence, repeated many times, until the recognition is continuous at all times. And what does it mean? As we are, we're doing our day, or whatever we do, or whatever we wish to do and we don't do, <laughs> we take a short moment where we relax body and mind. Just like that. Natural relaxation, natural ease. <coughs> Resting naturally. Resting naturally as you are. It might sound too simple, but just try it. You know, just to see how it feels for you. It's simple, but it's not easy. Okay, why it's not easy? We train ourselves to believe so much in the power of our thoughts and emotions. <clears throat> like even if we are trying not to give them power, it's too much effort. Yeah, like even if we are trying to detach from our thoughts and emotions, that would be like really far away from resting naturally. Mm. Resting naturally, that means resting with everything as it is, without trying anything, no contriving your relaxation. Resting as your thoughts and emotions, as in through your thoughts and emotions. Resting when we are not feeling good enough. Resting doesn't mean, okay, let's sit in the pain of not feeling good enough. Oh, I'm resting here. Oh, I can't rest anymore. It's not about that. Okay, so it's not in, it's not out. It's resting openly, naturally, and letting, and letting the data be as it is. Data refers to everything. Thoughts, emotions, sensations everything we perceive. So we simply call it data to keep things very simple and it's very supportive. You can see it in your own experience. So letting the data of not feeling good enough be exactly as it is. Remember what I shared before about trying to replace it? So you don't do it, you don't do it with resting naturally. You let the data be as it is and rely on open intelligence. Instead of indulging the data, instead of really looking, like thinking, like we had in this amazing talk, thinking where it comes from, where it goes to, really looking for the reason of feeling that and trying to find some kind, the source of it and fix it, instead of all of that process, rest naturally in the immediacy of this, this thought. I'm not good enough. Rest naturally, just like that. Just like you're doing right here with nothing more to do, like an old person basking in the sun. Nothing more to do. That's it. So that's the resting naturally as open intelligence, resting as awareness. Another thing you can, you can stop <laughs> doing, or it's, it's just like as a test for you, not avoid this thought of not being good enough. You know what I mean with avoiding? It's like, Really, um, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to think about it. Don't speak with me about it. Like, just trying to remove ourselves from situations that evoke this feeling and emotion, whatever it is, again. And we are trying, and I know I like try to go to different places or places that I feel more comfortable or not to speak about this, this topic. And wherever I felt jealous, I would go the other way around. And, you know, so. We're trying to avoid feeling what we're feeling. Why? Because it's, it's, we don't know what to do with that. It's really hard for us to feel it. So that's what we do. We micromanage what we feel and think, and we think that this is the solution. We are completely collapsed in our thoughts and emotions. So that's avoiding, replacing, and indulging. And the fourth choice we have, what we introduce here, is lasting naturally, just exactly as we are, for short moments, many times. 
short moment, initially it's very short. <laughs> That's why they're short, okay? <laughs> so we don't try to prolong them, trying, trying to stretch them out into a long, contrived moment. We're taking a short moment of complete relaxation and we repeat this whenever we remember to do it. So it's very, you see, it's like, it's completely natural. So you go and you do your things and then, oh, short moment, yeah. I can completely relax, and then you just repeat that whenever you remember to do so. Then when it comes to the challenges in our life, that's why we offer the foundation, foundational training called the 12 Empowerments. Because as we had, sometimes it's easy for people to take short moments in positive data streams. You know, when we feel like nothing harmful will happen, we're kind of safe in letting the data be as it is. But when it comes to challenges in our life, we really know we need all the support to know how to deepen this practice. <coughs> and that's why we offer the 12 empowerments, to really look at all the belief systems, everything that we focus all of our life, over all these years in our life, and trying to fix and this dynamic that we had with people, we, we're really looking at, at it with, uh, with the eyes of open intelligence, where we have powerful text and the support of the trainers to evoke this recognition so we can take it with us everywhere we go and this is like really extremely powerful uh, training because it doesn't do like it's not like a fix yourself project <laughs> you know like you do the course and then when it stops everything comes back again the recognition of open intelligence goes longer and longer in your life you know, I did the 12 Empowerments 11 years ago, and since then, the recognition, the stability, the clarity increased naturally with the support, and it's just completely amazing to reflect on all the relationship with my life, the relationship, the relationship in my life, the relationship with myself, with my family, things that I thought, I really believe that they're just so, they will never go away. You have this thing that you feel nothing will fix it. It's like it's traumatic. It will never go away. It's the way I am. <laughs> this is me, kind of fixed idea of how it's me and how it's going to look like. And this is my destiny. So even that open intelligence, the recognition, the instinctive recognition of open intelligence grows and deepens and we recognize our own confidence and stability and clarity to be in life in ways that are just so unimaginable because, because we are not fixed to any ideas. We are just so spontaneous and open. We know what our gifts and talents, we know how to contribute them. We are getting used to feeling powerful rather than feeling miserable, <laughs> feeling like victims of our thoughts and emotions. And the 12 empowerments also do that. It allows us to recognize what are these gifts and talents and how did we avoid contributing them. Yes, and then we come to know it moment at a time, how we can be responsive to each moment exactly as it is, other than avoiding life, avoiding our power to be of benefit. <coughs> 